Hello guys and welcome to another video and a series of videos in which I'm talking about creating a Bejeweled game in c -sharp using the XNA Game Studio. Today uh, I'll discuss how to design your classes, how the relation between those classes should be and how you can uh, create those classes in a Visual Studio. And first off, let us start with the first class that is automatically generated when you start your project and that class uh, is named game1.cs by default and probably if you you called it uh, otherwise I've called it Bejeweled 02 because it's my second go at the Bejeweled game and let's draw it on top here and let me type my class name in it and remember uh, this class has all that uh, pre-generated methods like the initialize method, like the update, the draw method, the load content method, the unload content method and it's important to know that this class should only contain logic that is useful for the user and the user interface. It should only contain logic to handle key presses, to handle mouse clicks, to handle uh, the drawing itself to call auto draw methods that should do the drawing but it should not contain any logic logic regarding uh, the game itself uh, the grids the pieces etc etc it should be a very clean class and then we can think about what our game needs uh, so we can adjust our classes accordingly and come to think of it um, it's it's not really uh, really it's not really a difficult design we are going to make here um, first off we want a, a, a main class that handles all the input and handles all the elements of that particular game and let me uh, call some uh, examples for instance you have a high score or you want to display the player's name maybe you want to display uh, the time that's uh, left or you want to display the uh, actual grid in which the pieces are you want um, maybe a menu overlay etc etc and it's a uh, kind of a uh, good idea to put all that uh, let all those elements come together in one class and that class should be our, our main class and I prefer to give it a manager class uh, a manager name so you know that it manages all the uh, different aspects of the game and I've called it game manager so let's type or create a new square here and let's call it game manager cs and the relation between the bejeweled and the game manager class is that the bejeweled class knows the game manager so there will be a, a, a variable with the type game manager declared in bejeweled and not the other way around so game manager should not know the existence of the bejeweled class it means that communication goes to the right hand side and not to the left hand side well it will sometimes go to the left hand side and when, when that happens we will be using a delegate which I'll be discussing in a few chapters uh, later on main, main thing to know is that the communication always goes from in the, in, the, in the direction of the arrow, so from Bejeweled to Game Manager. Well, the second class we can uh, think of, uh, well, it could be numerous of classes. Let's say we want to add high score, then we can, could make a class highscore.cs. Let's say we could uh, create a menu by naming it menu.cs. But let us focus at the main elements of the game we are creating which is uh, making a bejeweled game not all that 
nonsense around it. So we want the, the grid and we want the pieces to show up as soon as possible and add some logic to uh, those pieces uh, and that grid later on. So we're going to focus to uh, the game manager class, uh, the, a grid class, and that grid class will have the following relation. I'm going to draw it here. grid.cs and it will be like this. Game manager initializes the grid so there will be a variable with the grid type in game manager and not the other way around and communication will come from game, man game manager to the grid. And last but not least we will create a piece class and notice that I'm not calling it pieces. I've had a question about this. I'm not call it pieces. That might be uh, confusing because every instance of this class piece.cs contains an individual piece. It does not contain multiple pieces. So don't make that suggestion if you're designing uh, the classes and the relation is the same the grid knows the piece and not the other way around uh, one other thing worth mentioning is that um, the, the number of relations from game manager to grid is one on one there's one game manager and there's probably I would say one grid and the relation between between grid and pieces is different. It's one on multiple because there's one grid and there are multiple pieces. In my uh, game there will be 8 by 8 pieces so 64 pieces in total. This is uh, the way it should uh, make some sense to you and um, an advantage to using uh, to think about this uh, design before you start coding is that you won't get stuck in the middle of the project and you think well what have I done this isn't looking so great as when it started uh, or, wh or when I started programming um, because uh, when you start programming without an idea you might think of uh, uh, drawing a line like here because at that moment it might be convenient to you to draw a line here and then you have a problem that Bejeweled02 uh, has the grid class and Game Manager has the grid class and there might be uh, information going wrong between them it, it isn't going to uh, be, it'd be neat at least. <laughs> so think about your uh, design before you start coding. Very important. Well, uh, let's go to uh, the implementation itself. You go to your project in Visual Studio and I've already done it here. Uh, if you look at the Solution Explorer I've already created uh, the classes but uh, let me show you how to do it if you've not done it uh, yet. You right click on your solution all the way on top here. Click add new project. I have to wait a few seconds and when the prompt loads you click on Windows Game Library. You give it a name, I've called it Game Lib for Game Library uh, please do alter the name to something uh, relevant and click OK. When you've done that then this part here will pop up and then you can cl right click here oh, my P PC is terrible right click here add class and give it a name. For instance, if we go for the first class, we call it Game Manager, add, and it will be here. 
and do the same for uh, the other two classes the grid and the piece class once you've done that uh, you have to right click on uh, your main project you go to reference you right click on it and click on add reference And you make sure that the game library you've just created is uh, enabled here. You press OK. And then you go to your game 1 CS uh, class, your, your main class. And you add a single line here using and then the name of that library you just created. In my case it's gamelib. Once you've done that, you have access to all these classes that you've created here. As you can see, if I uh, want to define a game manager, I think. I need to add it also. Yeah. Then you can use it. Right. It's giving me an error because it's not public. Well. Okay then. Well, um, that's basically. Uh, how you start your project from scratch let me know if there's anything uh, uh, not not uh, obvious for you um, there's also written down uh, this tutorial in English and in Dutch at my website davebroncos.nl you can also leave a comment there or you can email me and I'll uh, uh, at least I hope you uh, enjoyed watching this. See you next time around. Bye-bye.